हेलो एवरीवन आई एम बी संध्या रानी लेक्चर इन केमिस्ट्री जीडीसी डी सी वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट क्रोमाटोग्राफी ऑलरेडी लास्ट लेसन्स वी हैव कंप्लीटेड व्हाट आर द क्रोमाटोग्राफी एंड व्हाट आर द टर्मिनोलॉजी वी हैव टू यूज इन क्रोमाटोग्राफी एंड पेपर क्रोमाटोग्राफी थिन लेयर क्रोमाटोग्राफी and yesterday class column chromatography we already completed now we are going to discuss ion exchange chromatography what is ion exchange chromatography ion exchange chromatography is a process that allows the separation of ions and polar molecules based on the charge properties of the molecules for example this is a technique for separating a mixture of charged particles such as cations like potassium plus sodium plus calcium plus 2 copper plus 2 and lanthanides and anions like chloride cl minus bromide br minus iodide i minus and uh, amino acids proteins like that we can separate from neutral molecules that can develop a charge in acidic or basic media such as a carboxylic acids and um, amines ion exchange chromatography separations are done by using a porous resin beds that is granules like granules to which are bonded acidic groups such as sulfonic so3 minus h plus carboxylate group co minus and h plus or basic groups such as amines and uh, ch2 nr diam dialkyl amines like basic groups we have to separate this ion exchange chromatography it can be used for almost any kind of charged molecules including large molecules like proteins like a small molecules like nucleotides and amino acids the solution to be injected is usually called as a sample and the individually separated components are called analytes it can often used in protein purification water analysis and quality control in liquid solid chromatography the mixture of different ion is absorbed over ion exchange resin this resin act as a stationary phase using a liquid solvent as a mobile phase the ions are eluted one after the other such phenomena is called as ion exchange chromatography what is the principle is involved in this ion exchange chromatography ion exchange chromatography retains analyte molecules based on coulombic interactions these are the very weak ionic interactions the stationary phase surface displays ionic functional groups that interact with uh, analyte ions of opposite charged particles this type of chromatography is further subdivided into cation exchange chromatography and anion exchange chromatography broadly said that cationic exchange chromatography retains positively charged cations because the stationary phase displays a negatively charged functional group and second one is anion exchange chromatography this retains anions using positively charged functional group then before going to the procedure we have to know the principle what the principle is used in the ion exchange chromatography the charged molecules in the sample are separated by the electrostatic forces or coulombic attractions of 
passed through the an ionic resin at particular pH and temperature. The separation occurs by reversible exchange of ions between the ions present in the solution and those present in the ion exchange resin. There are three types of matrices are used in ion exchange process. process. They are, first one is the ion exchange resin, ion exchange cellulose, ion exchange gel. All these three cases, the structure of matrix is same. Among the three ion exchange resins are more popular. Ion exchange resin are discovered by Adams and Holmes in natural ion exchange resins and synthetic ion exchange resins. We go further. First of all, we go for the natural ion exchange resin. These are the solid matrices with ion exchange property occur in nature. For example, zeolite, that is a sodium aluminum silicate. Second one, zirconium phosphate. Third one is lignin, that is a cellulose polymer found in plants, that is lignin. Then synthetic ion exchange resins. These are the ion exchange resins which can be prepared artificially. Resin by copolymerization of phenols and formaldehyde, we get a synthetic resin. When it is mixed with sulfur, bakelite is formed, which is used for the depending on the channel size. The ion exchange resins are classified into micro reticular resins and macro reticular resins. The resins having narrow channels is called micro reticular resins. The resins having a wide channels is called as a macro reticular resins. These macro reticular resins having a high surface area. These ion exchange resins having a functional groups with a particular charge, the counter ions with big mobile phase. Ion exchange resin, again classified into, already we said that in two types, broadly it is classified into two types, what is cation exchange resin and anionic exchange resin. The resins which are able to exchange anion are called anion exchange resins and the um, and that are able to exchange cation are called cation exchange resin when weak sodium hydroxide uh, first of all we go to the procedure when we weak sodium hydroxide is passed the positive charge of originine is neutralized. Na plus will, that is sodium ion will replace originine in the column. Thus, originine is eluted finally. The various fractions eluted containing individual amino acids are allowed to react with ninhydrin reagent to form colored complexes. This is continuously monitored for qualitative and quantitative identification of amino acids. The amino acid analyzer is based on this method. Here we see the already we discussed that the Ion exchange method is broadly classified into two types, that is various types of ion exchange resins are commercially available, but here we discuss about cation exchange resin and anionic exchange resin. Cation exchange resin, these resins exchange cations in the mobile phase naturally occurring, that is clay or zeolites 
absorb the positive cations that is H plus or Cl plus 2 or Mg plus 2 ions from the mobile phase and release Na plus and potassium plus ions into the mobile phase. Artificial resins are the polymers like already we have discussed natural resins and artificial resins. Natural resins we release Na plus ion, potassium plus ions, whereas artificial resins are polymers like polystyrene in which sulfonic group that is SO3 my SO3 H groups are substituted. These will exchange H plus ions from cation. So, this is the process in cationic resins. That is polystyrene, sulfonate resins, or sulfadex gel, or cellulose. These are bare acidic groups and immobilize cations from adjacent solutions. Then, for example, Na plus, Mg plus 2, Al plus 3, Thorium plus 4 cations are absorbed over cation exchange resins and eluted with HCl solvent. Then the sodium plus ions eluted first followed by magnesium plus 2 and aluminum plus 3 and thorium plus 4. It remains that the ion of highest charge thorium excite at the end. In the same way, the aqueous solution of rare earth salts is absorbed over cation exchange resin and uh, eluted with uh, citrate buffer solution. Weakly absorbed ion, that is the ion of a longer size, larger size, elute first. The size of the ion in the same period decreases with the increase in nuclear charge. This means that the ion with larger size has less charge and hence weakly absorbed over the cation exchange resin so it comes out first thus the cations are separated in ion exchange chromatography mixture of amino acids can also be separated by this technique then we will go for the anion exchange here we see anion exchange that is a DEAE cellulose trimethyl amino polystyrene DA sulfadex all these bare basic groups ionizing into fixed position and mobilize anions from neighboring solution if amino group is introduced in the artificial resin the resin act as an anionic exchange resin. For example, primary amine react with water and form or NH3 plus OH minus. This is react when we halogen group. The hydrogen is replaced by halogen group. Hydroxyl group is replaced by halogen group. This OH group is reduced, released into the mobile solvent a mixture of ions is absorbed over anion exchange resin when column containing this resin is eluted with a mobile solvent containing OH group the OH group the anions are absorbed over the resin are eluted one after other when the mixture of fluoride nitrate for chloride nitrate bromide are there ions are separated by ion exchange method fluoride comes out first followed by cl minus then no2 minus etc 
like that we can change we can elude the ions from the sample mixture here example for anion exchanges is benzene zeolite and uh, isoporous styrene amberite the mixture of ions is injected into the column of ion exchange chromatography instrument and um, they then eluted with the solvent the cellulose contains excess of h plus ions in cation exchange chromatography then it is sent to through a super suppressor column so we see in the figure anion exchange is stationary phase particles negatively charged particles analyte and artificial to the positive surface so that we can separate each other here in cation exchange the stationary phase particles are negative the positively charged particles are analyzed that is the artificial to the negative surface so that we can elude the a positive charged particle from the mixture then we go for the process of ion exchange chromatography here more highly charged molecules are more tightly bonded to the resin and so travel slowly and eluted a later already we discussed one example suppose the sodium plus and magnesium plus 2 and al plus 3 and some plus 4 ion is there in component first of all the na plus ion will come faster and later the highly charged particle will come later that is why here why because the more highly charged molecules are more tightly bound to the resin and so travel slowly and they are eluted later then moderately charged molecules equilibrating between the resin and the the moving buffer more readily then less charged molecules bind less strongly to the resin equilibrate with the moving buffer more readily and so travel rapidly and they are eluted faster so less charged particle bonded lightly so that they eluted from the equilibrium eluted from the buffer solution so this is the process the ion exchange chromatography will work so this is the procedure of ion exchange process then what are the significance of this ion exchange process chromatography what are the applications of this chromatography first of all we can we can because of the particular selectivity forces of material separation with ion exchange is used mostly in inorganic chemistry organic ions which from which form salts with the oppositely charged ions in another phase can be separated too so so that this is more popular the ion exchange chromatography some applications of ion exchange is the first one is the separation of similar ions from one another for example mixture of lithium plus na plus potassium plus can be separated by passing their solution through a cation exchanger in hcl is used as a eluent mixture of chloride bromide that is the seventh group ions can be separated using a basic anion exchanger that is the five normality of sodium nitrite is used to as an eluent and the less charged ion is chloride ion less atomic size ion so chloride ion will be come fast and then bromide and iodide so that we can separate of similar ions from 
one another the it is used to separation of similar ions each other because the different ions undergo exchange reactions to different extents second one is the removal of interfering radicals in the estimation of calcium plus 2 barium plus 2 ions by oxalate method phosphate is found to as a interfere cation so this can be removed by passing a solution of calcium plus 2 br plus 2 having phosphate through a sulfonic acid sulfonic acid cation exchange yeah. the calcium plus 2 or barium plus 2 get exchanged with h plus while the phosphate will pass as such through the column the calcium plus 2 ba plus 2 held by a resin will be removed by using a suitable elutent and third one is the softening of hard water the hardness of water due to the calcium and magnesium carbonates so hardness of water due to the presence of ca plus 2 magnesium plus 2 ions this may be removed by passing hard water through cationic exchange charged with na plus ion for example we used as a na plus ion resin to the water the calc alkyl group is attached with the calcium resin and the sodium ion will be removed from this solution like that we can we can remove the hardness of water that is the third property then fourth one is the complete determ demonication of water this requires demineralization of water this requires the removal of cations and anions for their removal water is the first pass through an acidic cation exchange when the metallic cations are exchanged by h plus ions the water obtained from cation exchange is now pass through a basic anion exchange when the anions present such as chloride nitride sulfate etc ions these are exchanged by hydroxyl ions of the exchanger the h plus and oh minus which you pass into a solution to exchange for cations and anions combine to form unionized water sulfonic acid resin is employed to the cation exchange while a strong basic resin as the anion exchanger and the fifth one is the separation of lanthanides when the solution having a mixture of lanthanides is passed through a column packed with soluble resin the cations present in the solution undergo exchange with the hydrogen or any other cation that may be present in the ion exchanger the cation having the maximum capacity to undergo exchange reaction gets held near the top while the other cation get held further down the column the order of their decreasing capacity to undergo exchange reaction so a typical elution curve of lanthanides or uh, buffer ammonium citrate solution in the elutent have been shown then another one is the separation of actinides in actinide series the separation of at plus 3 ions is done from a cation exchanger with an aqueous solution of ammonium hydroxy isobutyrate the elution occurs in the reserve reverse order of the atomic number due to the actinide contraction and the another one is the purification of organic compound extracted in water many natural products extracted in water have been found to be contaminated 
with ions present in water these ions can be removed by using ion exchanger technique then another one is the separation of sugars this method was developed by kiliani and gill kim and gill in 1951 these sugars are converted into borate complexes and are separated using dovax resins similarly disaccharides can be separated from monosaccharides and the individual compounds of hexose and pentose mixtures is resolved and the last one is the separation of amino acids ion exchange chromatography has been used to separate the complex mixtures of 18 amino acids obtained by the acid hydrolysis of proteins so that this is the ion exchange method these are the some applications of this ion exchange chromatography so that we conclude today's our discussion that is ion exchange chromatography thank you